Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to show you how I made these urban rubble bases for my Steel Legion troopers here. Using just some cork board, some old sprue I had lying around, as well as some plastic canvas stuff that I've used for uh, fencing and grading for some other projects. Uh, also some corrugated cardboard from leftover cardboard boxes, as well as some plastic straws. All these were just lying around my hobby desk and I put them in different combinations who I think simulate some nice decayed urban structures. So the foundation for all these urban rubble bases is going to be cork board. And here I just break it across with my fingers. I don't really cut it out with scissors. I think this gives it a more random realistic look. If you just go along the edges, just peel it away until you get a sh silhouette shape that you like. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to break the piece of cork in half to simulate like a building that is cracked, fallen over, and I'm going to have my trooper climbing over it. And I'm going to be using this old sprue here that I'm just going to cut with some scissors to represent bricks or rubble that has fallen down and are piled up on this piece of building here. And I think sprue really does a good job of simulating brick much better than if you're trying to cast it out of clay or do something like that. This is much quicker. And I'm also going to use the sprue to act as kind of like a base to hold the cork board in place. So you can use the sprue for a lot of different functions as you're making these bases. I'm going to be using them on nearly every base. Uh, for something. So here I'm just gluing these little chopped up bits onto the top here of, of the cork board again to simulate brick. I'll probably even paint it red just to give it a little bit of a different look from all the, the gray that I'm going to be painting on this base later. So I often will put my figure on there that I'm going to use for the base. I kind of tailor each base to the figure and try and get a, a look that I like. And so here I'm just going to be gluing on little bits of cork to also simulate rubble, just to give a little different texture to the base. And so that base is done, and I'm going to move over to using this plastic canvas to simulate grading here. So I just cut it out uh, along with some cork board, and here I will use scissors so that the uh, grading here uh, contours to the shape of the base. And I'll just kind of cut out randomly till I get a base that slightly overlaps here, this 25 millimeter GW base that I'm going to be placing this upon. And then all you have to do is glue on the uh, the grating to the top of the cork, glue the cork onto the base, and there you go. You got yourself a pretty interesting base. And just to give it a little bit more texture, I'm going to be adding more of that cork as kind of rubble on the side of this grating over here. And so I'll just be placing this randomly. And as I paint this, I'm going to be painting the grating kind of like this rusted steel grate. And so having some of uh, this rubble there, which I'll paint gray, will give nice contrast on the base. And for my next base, I'm going to go for more of an industrial look. I'm going to have a piece of piping running through a concrete section, and I'll put some grating over it, kind of giving a more industrial feel to this base. And again, it's just a plastic straw. I'm just going to glue it down to my base with some of this cork board on either side of it. And after I've glued those down, I'm going to cut out some of that plastic canvas again. And I'm going to place it over top again as some grating here. And I'm going to use a piece of sprue here just to hold up the grating above the straw here. Since the straw is a little bit taller than my cork board and my, my grating here wouldn't sit on top of it otherwise. So another good use for the sprue here. And then I'm just going to take small little bits of the cork and place it on the outside. Again, just to give it a look of rubble and distract your eye from the piece of sprue that I put down. And once I have that finished, all I have to do now is glue on the grating. Just put some super glue on top and put down the plastic canvas. And again, we have now pretty good looking industrial base. For my next base, I'm going to switch up a little bit here, and I'm going to be using two pieces of corkboard to represent a bombed out section of building or wall, which I'll have a trooper hiding behind. So I'm just going to take the two pieces of corkboard here, use my fingers to pry apart the edges, give it a nice, realistic, jagged edge, like the building has been part of some sort of massive bombardment or assault. So now I'll just glue them down. And I'll also go over them with a hobby knife and kind of make little gouges into the the flooring and the wall just to break break up the uniformity of the surface. It looks a little bit more realistic, like bullets have been ricocheting off the wall. 
and it'll look a lot better when we dry brush it as well to give a little bit more contrast. So just now gluing the wall section onto the floor. And now just to give a little bit more interest to what will otherwise be pretty bland looking base if we paint it, it'll just pretty much one texture. I'm adding some pieces of cut up paper clip here that will act as rebar. Uh, the paper clip too is very slightly ribbed, kind of like what you would see on modern rebar and concrete. And so I'll just have this kind of jutting out here. I even put a little bit of cork board on top of one of the pieces of rebar. Like again, the wall got blown out, but some of it was left behind. And I'm also just putting little bits of rubble, little bits of cork board uh, around the base of the wall and on the edges to give more detail to the scene. And now for my next base, I am going to be using my typical cork base here and I'm going to be attaching a piece of a barbecue skewer and I'm going to take some of that grating now and just to show you all the different things you can use this for, I'm going to make here a little fence that I'm going to have a trooper standing in front of. I'm going to cut it with the scissors, bend it like it's a torn down, very ancient fence here and I'm just going to glue it down with some super glue. And it's very simple to make, but it will look great once we paint it up. Now for the last base I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how you can use some of this corrugated cardboard to make some actually cool metal sheeting. So I'm just going to peel the paper off of one section of the cardboard here, exposing the corrugation. And I'm just going to cut out a small little section. You can use this like here as a, as a fence, but I'm going to use it here as like a collapsed just piece of building material. So I, after I cut out uh, the cardboard, I'm just going to add, again, a piece of straw here to represent some piping. This is just going to be like a hodgepodge of all the different materials we've used thus far. So I'm just going to glue down this piece of corrugated cardboard onto this pipe. And I'm going to take a little piece of grating. Again, this is just going to be a bunch of different kinds of rubble all combined. And I'm going to glue that onto the top. And then even take a little bit of the cork board and glue that on as, again, more fallen rubble. All right, so this will be like a completely collapsed building or blown out section of an industrial complex that my trooper is climbing over. And once it's all painted up, I think it's going to look pretty awesome. So now we got to prime all these pieces of terrain. So I am just going to prime them black with my airbrush here. I am going to Zenithal highlight these, which is spray down from a 45 degree angle with, with some gray. It'll make the whole painting process that much easier when I go on and I paint it. It'll show me where to highlight. It'll show me where all the shadows should be. And also I can water down my paint more and let my base coat do more of the work in blending the lowlights and the highlights. So when painting this base, I'm first going to cover all the metal parts, of this corrugated section of sheet metal. I'm going to cover it in this typhus corrosion all over. I know oftentimes people like to paint on their metallic covers and then dry brush typhus over it. I like to do the opposite, especially for really rusted out sections like this. And so now I'm going to paint the pipe with a uh, hammered copper color from Vallejo. I'm painting it a copper color just to differentiate it from all the metal that is kind of sitting on top of it, the steel that is. So now I'm going to paint the grate here that's lying on this rubble pile. And here I'm going to actually use the steel as a base. So I'll show you another way that you can use typhus corrosion. And also here I will highlight the copper pipe here with actually some bronze just to give it a nice little subtle highlight. So now I'm going to take that typhus corrosion. I'm just going to blot it on in certain areas, leaving still a lot of that metal exposed. And after that dries, I'm going to go and I'm going to get some RZA rust. And I'm going to dry brush over pretty much the entirety of the that corrugated cardboard which is here simulating sheet metal and i'm really gonna hit it with a pretty heavy dry brush and i'm also going to go over that grate just around the edges all right so you'll get kind of two different distinct layers of rust some sitting on the type of corrosion and then a light rust color over what was the steel sections of that grate and after the rizza rust is dried i'm going to take some silver and dry brush it over the grating and also the sheet metal here to make it look like a little bit of the metal kind of shining through the rusted areas to give a really dingy old look to that piece of sheet metal there. And then I'm just going to wash my piping here. All right, just to dull down that bright copper color. 
Next, I'm going to use that patina technical paint from GW, I forget the name, that is often used for copper or bronze statues and things, but I like to mix it in with really rusted pieces of steel. I think it gives a nice uh, contrast in colors, putting some of that blue in there. It might not be the most realistic because I don't think steel oxidizes like this, but you know, whatever. I think it looks good. And I'll also put a little bit onto the copper piping. And now when I apply this, I first put it down in a thin layer. Then I go and I get my brush wet and I wipe off just a little bit of this technical paint, leaving just a faint trace behind. I think it looks a little bit more subdued, a little bit more realistic. And then the last thing we have to do is now highlight the rubble that was sitting on the base. And there we go. We have one of our bases finished. Now I'm going to show you how I just paint corkboard as dilapidated concrete. So the first thing I do is I go over it with a wash. I go over it with a good old Nuln oil. And this works well with the Zenithal highlighting we did when we primed it. So there will already be some natural highlights and lowlights. And this wash will just accentuate that. So we'll have to do a lot less work actually painting and dry brushing it here in a second. But once that wash dries, I'm just going to go here with just a natural gray. And I'm just going to go over most of the sections of the wall, leaving some parts of the wall in, near the middle of the wall kind of untouched. And now I'm going to go and I'm going to take that typhus corrosion that we've used on some of the other metals in these bases and put it on top of these pieces of rebar. And then I'm going to get my Rizza rust out and just dry brush some of that on there to, again, look like some rusted rebar hanging out there. And finally, I'm going to go and then I'm just going to touch it up with a little bit of silver show the metal kind of shining through the rust. And now for my final highlight, I'm just going to take some gray sky from Vallejo, just hit the edges of this concrete here and around those holes there, just as a final highlight to give some nice contrast on the base. So I'm hitting all the edges, that rubble there, and I'm leaving most of the mid sections untouched with the dry brush. I think it gives a nice realistic look to the concrete. So now here are all of my bases after I've gone and painted them up and I think they look pretty good for just being a bunch of materials lying around on my desk. I only showed you how I painted two of them because well I basically just duplicated the techniques from those two bases onto all the other ones so you really weren't missing anything but I was real happy how just a few different materials can be used and combined in different ways to give some different feels you know like I you can make some really cool industrial looks with the piping and the grating and of course, you can just use the corkboard by itself to simulate dilapidated buildings and things such as that. So in the end, I was really pleased with how these turned out. These models were test models. I was thinking about including some of these Steel Legion guys into my Death Krieg army just so that I could play my army as both the Death Krieg of Core and Steel Legion. Since the new codex dropped and the Steel Legion has some cool rules, I, I want to be able to take advantage of those. And since they're both basically guardsmen with gas masks, I think it will work well. So probably for about half of my my Krieg army, base them in this manner, put them on these urban rubble bases, and I think they'll, they'll also blend in well with the current trench bases I've been making. So hopefully you at least got something out of this video. Hopefully you learned a technique or two. Uh, if you did, please hit that like button, subscribe, and I will see you soon with some more videos. Take care.